it's the chat. So what is this going to be six. you and me? So it'll be you and I and Moish. Oh, Moish is here. Mike. You don't know okay. that. Okay. Uh, right. uh, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, is it off day? I don't know. Well, anyway, we're on chapter six. But if you have your art scroll, it's 1257. What are we doing? The Megillah? Yeah, might as well. Okay, so what chapter? As much as we can. What? What, cha so, what chapter? Chapter six. Remember, we, we finished uh, last week where um, Haman uh, 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 Haman had a, let me just see. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, last week we covered the where Haman took um, uh, Mordechai through the streets, if you remember. Right. All right, we covered that. And uh, we're up to, yeah, chapter six then. Now, like I mentioned before, Achashverosh was very concerned. What was he concerned about? He was jealous about uh, Haman and Esther. Right. Uh, that was a perfect, perfect setup. That yeah. uh, what her name uh, Esther purposely did it. Oh, that's why she only invited him. So therefore, at the beginning of chapter six, that, that night the king can't couldn't sleep. He couldn't sleep because he was concerned. Maybe this guy home is going to take away my wife. Something's going on. He's going. That's what he thought. Why was he was worried sleep? he had so many? <laughs> they were concubines. <laughs> Remember, Esther was his wife. And those, but by the way, in Persia, that was a common thing. Elaborate parties for many, many days or for months, uh, and uh, have many wives. This is, uh, you had a main wife, and then you had all that, whatever it was, that. two main wives, whatever it was in those days. And you had a harem, especially the king. You had all these, all, all the concubines there. Okay, so that can make the king, the king could not sleep because he was thinking to himself, Homer is out to, to take my wife away. But he, in order to that maybe he could fall asleep, but Yomala be a safe as And he said, you know, maybe we should bring my diary, my the book of the chronicles, and uh, be a unique and I'll be read before before the king. That'll be read before me. Okay, now verse two by Imotseh Hasu was found written, I should give Mordechai a bit sort of that Mordechai happened to mention. Uh, about Victor and Sherez, who was or plotting, um, there were some officers uh, they were plotting to go ahead and kill King Achashverosh. Ah, this is and just like the two chamberlains in the king in the court in Pharaoh. What about in Pharaoh? What? They, well, there were two chamberlains, remember? Yeah, by Paro. By Paro, right. Doing what? Right, what one was the butcher and one was the baker. Oh, oh you mean the, that? Oh, the, the uh, dreams. Yeah. 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 But here's a little difference. Here, Yachashver says, well, if I'm, uh, I've got to go make, that was a good sleeping film in those days. If you couldn't fall asleep, you, you read the Chronicles, read some of some the history book. So that's what he said. And, and they found that. Uh, that uh, it was written by uh, Mordechai saved the king's life. So look what the king said. Tell me, what honor, what great thing that Mordechai did for because of that. He saved my life. Absolutely nothing. Oh, now that uh, shook him up a little bit. What? Somebody saves my life and I don't reward him in any way. <laughs> okay. In fact, that's what I'm sorry about. Yeah, so they told him that nothing was done to him. Nothing was done to him. And in the meantime, remember, Haman is now coming to the, the king to tell him what? What did happen the night that, that just before he was with Zeresh, his wife, and his advisors? What did they tell him to do? You're breaking up. I'm breaking. I can't <laughs> say, Are I didn't hear the question. Uh, I, my question was, what did what was Homan's plan? Come to, uh, to meet the king now. What was his plan? Homan wanted to get rid of Mordechai. Yeah, and, and the Jews. Then we know, but, but more specifically, he wanted. He was going at this time to come to the king's uh, uh, throne, uh, king's uh, chamber, and tell him to uh, to uh, to kill Mordechai. Right. Get rid of Mordechai. 
Okay. Ah, okay. So, but here, he just before he came, he was informed that he didn't reward Mordechai to save him his life. Here's a homeless coming to ask to hang him, to kill him, and and uh, Achashverosh just wants to reward him. Okay. And, uh, and now it says, let's, let's go to uh, uh, verse six on that chapter. By Yom, I have a homeless, and homeless came. And he said to him, What shall be done? What shall be done to a man I want to honor? What do you think Homer was thinking of? Homer was thinking of himself. Exactly. What other person would the king want to honor besides me? So he's saying he thinks it's for himself. But Achashver is thinking it's for, for Mordecai, who's the um, uh, worst enemy. So he's like the, the turning point of the story. Okay. By Yom Haman El Amelech. And look what he says. Haman says to the king, Ish Asher Amelech, basically, you want to honor somebody, you're going to follow him. The Viol of Ushmalchus, have him dress up in uh, royal garments, the Rashbu Amelech, the king that wore, the Sus Asher Rechabal of Amelech, and the horse, and get the horse that King Achash, that I, that I ride upon. I said he turned Esamal Chusbrook to have put the crown, the crown of the king, on this person who you want to honor. Put it on his head. Okay. Be on a son, Halavush Rasus, Adi Adish, and Surah Melech, and then give over the, the, the horse and all the um, majestic clothing to one of your officers. Be a Bishras Ish, let them dress this particular man in, in these, in these uh, royal garments. Asher Melech, a face be Koro. Um, what did she do with him? She pay while I sus but a cobu here. Ride him through the streets of the city of of Tiratasi. I suppose must be Shushan. The Koro lefana and proclaim before him. Koko yeoselu ish. Shemelech face bro. This is what's done to a person who the king wants to honor. Now, what do you think Achashverosh is now thinking? Achashverosh is thinking about Mordechai. And, and yeah, that's one thing because he had in mind he wants to honor Mordechai. But when he heard Homan say all these things, he asked him, what should I do to a man who I want to honor? He says, well, dress him up in king and in, in royal garments. Oh, well, that, that Homan is trying to usurp his power. Yeah, even that. He said, oh, it's not only that he wants to, he wants to take away my wife, he wants to become the king. He wants to wear gar the, uh, the um, just the garments. He wants to ride on my horse. <laughs> okay, so really, uh, he really, was <laughs> by saying that, he didn't realize, Homer did not realize he was making a bath for himself. And by the way, a little trivia question. I might, I might have said this to you uh, in my previous classes on the on the Megillah. Well, we, the Megillah does not tell us the name of Akashverish's horse. What was the name of Akashverish's horse? It's one of my favorite trivia questions. Okay. Shifragaz. Shifraga? Shifragaz, yeah. <laughs> in fact, the Midrash says, he tells um I'm gonna take my my horse ship for guys. <laughs> that's what he said. So anyway, that's just a um, a little trivia. But we obviously it's interesting that we know his name. We know it only from the midrash. Okay. So there was another midrash that um said that Hamid, that Ahasuerus only gained his power through usurping it also. That there so, was a he didn't become king. He 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 took over like a coup d'état. Well, I mentioned I mentioned that when we began that uh -huh. he was a stable boy. He ran, went up the ranks, and finally he became the king. But and that's he why became the king through usurping power through a coup d'état. Right, and that's why that's why he didn't have a party until the third year because too many people were opposed to him. So finally, I don't know what happened. But after three years, he was able to. Uh, you know, be accepted more by the people, and then says, "Now's a good time for me to have the party." So maybe that's, that's also why he's so paranoid. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Haman wants to was thinking about himself. Achashverosh wants to reward Mordechai, Haman's worst enemy, and and uh, Haman <laughs> caused himself trouble by what he was asking. Uh, for, for how do you honor? What job you done to the person the king wants to honor? It appeared that a king. Oh, not only does he want to take my wife away, he wants to become the king. Okay. Uh, and let me see what it is. And then we go, let's see. Ah, now verse, what is that? Verse 10. I'm sure when Haman heard this, he must have uh, fallen through the floor. 
Good, take my majestic clothing, get my horse. That should do exactly what you said. I say, And do this with Mordechai, the Yehudi who sits by the king's gate. Now look what he says. I'll stop of woman because she's about to not omit a single detail that you wanted. So the measure says, after Haman heard that it's going to be Mordechai, he says, oh my God, I'm going to go such an honor to get him. So he, he tried to limit it. He says, okay, maybe, maybe you don't have to give him such a big honor. Maybe give him a gift. Or maybe give him the uh, uh, tax of one particular city that of one day he'll give to him. Or somebody, he suggests all sorts of things. And that's why um, at the end of that, of that verse, verse 10, it says, do do not omit, omit a single detail because he wanted to omit certain things. He, wanted, he didn't want to give Mordechai so much honor. Maybe he didn't want to parade him through the streets. It's, too, it's like others will know about it. Maybe, you know, and so on. So, never, so but the, the king says, he was, he was angry at him anyway because he was thinking he's going to take his wife away. He says, no, do not omit a single, per, a single thing you said. Okay, he couldn't. Uh, verse 11, he had no choice. Haman had to take the uh, army, the horse, he, well, this is Mordechai here, his, his arch enemy, he's now dressing. He bailed Berchov here, and he, and he led him through the streets of Shushan, he crawled up on up, and he proclaimed before him, Koko Yevselish Asher Melech Beis Bikorov. This is what's done to a person that the king wants to honor. Um, okay. The thing I mentioned is a midrash that brings down that when he was led through the streets and a walking up uh, whatever must have been made, a thoroughfare uh, where Haman's family lived. So the uh, his daughter. The daughter, right. What did she think? I, I mentioned this. She, she was she, thinking. She looked out the window and she fell out. Well, what, was, what did she think? She, 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 she thought it was after. coming on the horse, ah, not Mordechai. Right, so she thought, oh, Mordechai, my father's enemy, is leading the uh, leading the parade over here. I'm going to throw some garbage on him. Okay. And she did. But then okay. when she saw who it was, oh, my gosh, it got so it was terrible. So she fell off the roof. <laughs> okay, uh, so not only did he uh, have to lead Mordechai through the streets and honor him, Unfortunately for him, he lost the daughter. Okay. By Yosha Mordechai al Sharia, then it says Mordechai returned after the after the parade. He returned back to the king's gate. Amon the so and Haman, you, you just realize how he must have felt like uh, like terrible, terrible, awful. Avail. Ah, that's what it is. Avail. What does the word avail mean? Morning. Yeah, morning, you see? Of, like you say, somebody got the loads of somebody, he's in Avelos. This is mm -hmm. a morning period. So some, some say, ah, why was he mourning? Well, he was mourning because he lost his daughter. Although, I mean, that's how they know that Haman suffered in loss. Vakavui Rosh, and his head was covered. Uh, some say, <laughs> some say that his head was covered, so, you know, he was coming back home, and it was covered with some garbage or something, whatever landed on his head. Mm -hmm. So, he lost the daughter. He was mourning, and and he and his head was full of some or maybe cold. Inside and outside, but he was dirty. He, yeah. Okay. And verse thirteen. Well, what do you do? Haman's got to tell his wife what happened. But he said, And so Haman told Zeresh his wife and all his friends, "Oh, what happened." But she, that, believe it or not, Zeresh's, Zeresh's wife was uh, was quite a very very smart woman, and his, also his sages. The the wise men, the wises, that was in that period of time. And Zeresh's wife said to him, "If if uh, if Mordechai, as he told me that he comes from the seed of the Jews, he's a Jewish man." And you and you have begun to fall before him. That means you can never prevail over him. Even told him, "Can a faulty fall upon us? Eventually, you might fall before him." 
So they, they predicted it. They said, if such a thing happened uh, to you, that your, uh, your worst enemy, you, you're parading your worst enemy through the streets, that's not a good sign for you. Well, no, you know, remember, uh, in those days, astrology was a big thing. And when you say this is what sages or wise men, it doesn't mean, just mean that they were scholars and graduated college. Um, it means that they were very learned in astrology. And they believed the star, in certain signs. And if a sign like this, this thing happens, it must be a sign that the harmony is gonna, that his downfall is coming. You see, they, they knew through the um, their astrology. Okay. In fact, remember Paro, the, um, what do you call it, the, uh, the sages in the time of Paro also knew. What did, remember they, they told Paro to give up. Today, what, did they, what did they tell him one time? They told him enough is enough. Stop it no. and let the Jews go. No, no, no. They told him something more than that. They even knew, they told him, today, the Savior of Israel will be born. And they were right. Ah, but they, one yeah. part they didn't, they didn't see the whole, the whole thing, the whole picture. But they told him, but we don't know if the, the Savior of Israel will come from the Jews or he, they will, or he will come from the Egyptians. And so on one particular day, not only were the firstborn Hebrews uh, thrown in the, into the Nile, but also the Egyptian boys too. Then the question is, why didn't they know everything? Because the, the, the astrologers, they didn't see the complete picture. They were right. Moshe Rabbeinu was born. And the reason why they didn't know if he's going to be a Hebrew or an Egyptian, because his mother was a Hebrew, but the woman who bared him was an Egyptian. That's why they didn't know. That's but he was also thing. born three months early. Uh, well, that's another thing. But they were right. Uh, our, own, our own sages say they, they were correct. That that was the day when Moshe was born. Okay. Uh, okay, back to Homo. So this is so they, they must have been the astro astrologers in those days. So look, if this is happening to you, Homon, it's a bad sign. Okay. Old Hamadabri Mimo, they were still discussing, they having a dinner, whatever they had. To say, I met a and but the officers of the king came to remember Homo had to do something, but he had to go. He had to go to a Mishnah. Remember that second party that yeah. uh, the Esther invited him? <laughs> he felt like going, be a lucky stuff, right? But they have of yes, Haman, and they, they really hurried, you know, they hurried to bring Haman, Elamish Tech, which I saw us there, to a, to a uh, party that Esther made. To know you here, you see, Haman feels terrible, you know, based on what, what just happened to him. And I don't know if Esther knew at that point what happened, but, uh, but this was. Like a, uh, Esther, like a, it was like it seems like whatever she did was correct. She had a first party. She only invited Haman. This is the second party again. She's only inviting Haman, and he and he had they had a horrible day. The Haman had to go ahead and, and honor his worst enemy, and they're going. And he told so obviously he wasn't he wasn't interested in coming to a party. Okay, uh, chapter seven. By Yavo Hamelch Baman. Remember those days when they, when they talk about a party, it was more drinking, you know, it was a wine party that uh, they used to have in those days. This is the fourth party in the Megillah. Yeah. All they're doing is getting drunk. Well, that was common among the Persians. This is the second party that Esther invited them to. Right, but, the, but Ahasuerus made two yeah. parties before that. Yeah, in the third year. And, the, and when Esther went 180 the days queen. and then seven days. Right, right. Oh, and then also so he made a big, a big party one when Esther was appointed queen. You know, so, yeah. Okay. So, now, again, uh, Ahasuerus is, gonna, is going to question Esther exactly the way he, he asked her uh, the day before, the night before. Uh, where does it say it? HaMelech Esther, the king Ahasuerus said to Esther, on the second day of the party, what is your request, Esther, um, the queen? And it'll be given over to you. Again, remember I mentioned that if it says Esther, the queen, in this case, he's correct. It doesn't, it, with, with Vashti, remember, she, she criticized Ahasuerus for that because uh, she's been called Queen Vashti because she's royalty. Uh, Esther, well, he, at this point anyway, Arashverosh didn't realize that she's also royalty. So, anyway, so, it, so as he 
he says, Esther, the queen, you're a queen because of me. Yeah. And how do I know she's royalty? Although I didn't know at that point. Because um, Mordecai was from the Sanhedrin. No, no, royalty. She was Who's royalty? She was from King Shell. She was That's right, King, King Saul. She is also, just like Mordecai, they're oh, both right. descendants of King Shaul, King Saul. But they weren't so, so way, proud of also, that. Well, maybe he wasn't known as, as, uh, as much as Nebuchadnezzar, but he was he was the first king of Israel. Yeah. Okay, so um, so he says, Esther the queen, what's your question? What's your request? And again, he says that same thing, but I'm only giving you half the kingdom. Not, not more than that. Remember what he's referring to? Which part is he not going to give her? To her, even if she requests it, he so said the last the right? Remember that point that Bikamitis was still not completely built, it was stopped. That I do not uh, 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 give to you. So, you see, in that respect, Ashverus was not a lover of Jews, maybe he would not uh, annihilate them like Homon, but he wasn't, a, he didn't like us. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's go further. Verse 3 Batan. Esther Hamalkovat Omar and Esther the Queen said the following If I find favor in your eyes uh, of the king, and if it's good in the eyes of the king, uh, um, I want you to give save my soul with my request and my people with my with my petition. Okay. Now remember at this point. Akashverosh did not know who she was referring to. He didn't, at least at this point, he did not know that she was a uh, from B'nai Israel. Absolutely not. And she continues, because my people have been sold to be destroyed and killed and, and slain and so on. If they said, look, he said, she said something like this. But if for some reason they were sold as slave or to be servants, I would have been quiet. This would be for the uh, because in, in in that case the king's not going to lose anything by it. But he said in this, but but the problem is you're not going to have people around. My whole nation is going to be destroyed for some reason. You wanted okay, you wanted to do some wrong to my people and make them servants and. Um, for different people, okay, at least they're alive. But but here, the they're being sold, they're being given over to be extinguished, you know, exterminated. Okay. Now, it, it seems like Achashverosh had no idea it was her people because he didn't know that Esther was Jewish. And King Achashverosh said to, to the queen, uh, Esther the queen, me who like he as if he does not know anything about such a thing that anybody suggested that a, a nation shall be totally annihilated. Now I don't uh, maybe you see he could be uh, he makes he makes himself as nothing he never heard of such a thing. Here is Homan came to him, remember he said there are certain people he wants to extinguish right. and to annihilate, and now he, he's been told that there's some his heart people is being annihilated and he's like, who, what people? <laughs> you know, so we, like if he made, he made, I didn't know anything about it. Well, it's funny because yeah. before Ahasuerus tells Haman to make sure you follow my instructions to the T with Mordecai, don't leave right. out any detail. But before that, he says to Haman, do whatever you want. Yeah, because again, yeah. But at that point, remember in chapter three, where Homan suggests that he wants to annihilate a certain group of people, right. he doesn't say who they are. No. And but, then, but and says, go ahead, said, do whatever you who want. Are they? Who are And now he's, so uh, he said, do whatever you want, right. Uh -huh. And now he says, what? Like he's not, what people? What, what uh -huh. are you talking about? I, I don't know if he means uh, I, that he never heard of such a request from anyone to exterminate any group of people, or he means, uh, what people let uh, or maybe man that, that from your people I didn't say anything like that maybe he would never even thought that the people that Homon suggested to this to annihilate was really Esther Esther's people maybe you know maybe that's what he means by that well I don't know that unless he's playing dumb 
It has never heard of such a thing. And the Gemara does say, Ashrerus Melech be patient. Ashrerus was a, in some respects, was stupid. But uh, I don't know, I think he was a very smart cookie. Well, he was always drunk. Oh, well, I don't know if he was drunk at this place. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, he denied knowing who, who's this. I don't know anything about it. And then so Esther told him. Well, Tom Esther and Esther said, It's sorry of this. This man, this is my the enemy and the problems that we have. Hamun Hara said, "This Hamun, the evil one." Now, I think I mentioned many times to you in Hebrew, at least whenever the Torah uses this word, whenever you say "zeh," this Haras etzbad, you're pointing to the to the object or to the person. She went ahead. Not only did she say this Hamun is the person who's doing it, she pointed her finger to him. So she pointed them out. Where else do you find it in the Torah where the word zeh is used? And it means it was pointed out to the person. Remember the, the um, uh, for, what is the first mitzvah that B'nai Yisrael received as a nation? The calendar, Rosh Kodesh. Okay. So if you have your Humashim, look at the words that it says. Uh, let me get it. Chapter 12, I think. Chapter 12 of the book of Exodus. This 12. Hmm. Yeah, chapter 12. When, when the first mitzvah of, of uh, Rosh Chodesh, remember? Look what, it, look what it says. Verse 2. Ha-chodesh hazeh lochem. Ha-chodesh hazeh. This month, like so to speak, Hashem pointed out to Moshe and Aaron at that time. You see the, where the moon is now? It looks like a well, we always call it like a banana, it's shaped like a banana. That's that's the new month of the year. Uh, uh, yeah, well, in this case, the new month, uh, the first month of the year. But every month, when you see it that size, looks like a sliver of a, uh, looks like a, a banana, crescent, like a crescent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then that's what's called this. in Hebrew. It's interesting. We call when they they use they don't use we say the banana looks like a banana or something. They use they said when it looks like this uh, the uh, the shape of a sickle. At the top of a sickle, uh, when you see it, the shape of a sickle, that is the new moon. And that's when you proclaim it, Rosh Chodesh. But it was like, so to speak, Hashem pointed to it. See it this way, Hazeh. Hachodesh Hazeh. Whatever you have in the Torah, Hazeh. Uh, uh, I think it said by the. Let's see if I got a menorah, I think. Um, uh, let me see. There's a few places it says that. Um, let me see. God damn. Uh, I don't find it. We're in chapter seven. Yeah. Okay. Eight. Okay. Let me get it back to it. Yeah. We're in chapter seven. Okay. Seven. So okay. So so when he when she when it says um this man was was the words used Haman Harochazet this evil mm -hmm. person. Uh, Haman, it means she pointed it, pointed it with his finger at, at Haman. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Haman was was terrified. You know, he, he knew he knew that something bad's going to happen to him. Now that Achashverosh was infuriated, he was so angry. Was one one thing he loved Esther that it appears very clearly. And Haman, uh, the king, was so angry. He gets up from his throne and, and he leaves the party. And you not see the son goes to whatever that uh, pan of bonds that he had. Amon Ahmad was Homan though. Vacation of Shom Islam al like anybody else would do. Homan now standing pleading with with, uh, with Esther. Uh, I don't know what he said. I, I'm obviously, he must have said, Oh, I didn't mean that. I just made a mistake or whatever it was. They pardon me. I don't, I don't know what he said. But he knew the end is coming. He knew the king was very angry at him. He said, maybe if we could talk to Esther, I didn't really mean it. I'm sorry, or whatever he said. Now, um, the king walked outside. He was angry. Now he's coming back. Next verse, verse 8. And the king returns from his botanical gardens that he had there. A base reached to Ayayin. To the party, with a, having their wine party. Now look what it says. But Haman no fell while he touched Esther Leha, and Haman oh, yeah, yeah. fell. Oh, you don't see what he's doing. She's falling on the couch, wherever Esther was sitting on. 
He fell on the couch in front of Esther. What do you think Ahasuerus is going to say? Hey, I'm right. <laughs> I'm right. Haman is, wants to give my wife Esther. By Yom Malach, and the king says, Adam, the Chavosh of Malach, told me, but boy, it's right of my house. You want to take away my wife, my queen? No, oh boy. <laughs> that, that, that was the end of Haman. But of all, you had saw me, Pia Malach, and that, those words came out of the king's mouth. And they covered Haman's face. What's that? They covered Haman's face. They were going to take him away like a prisoner. Uh, no, to, to be killed. Yeah, they, that's they, what like, when they hang him, they cover his face. They cover his face, and then he's going to be hanged. Yeah. But that's what they did. That was the point. It seems like that was the executions in, in Persia at that time. Maybe they still do. Okay. Now, there was another fellow, Charbona. He was a eunuch. Yeah, it's true. Uh, Yomar Harbono, I called men a signal from America. Now Harbono is going to make it even worse. Um, it's a Gamhin El Eti You should also know that Haman built the gallows to hang Mordechai. Uh, I should even told him that the king, the Mordechai, did the gallows of Mordechai, who spoke good for the king, saved his life. And where is these gallows? Or maybe they someone was he made it in this house, wherever it was, backyard, wherever he put up the gallows. It's hard. 50 cubits. Huh? What is that in our measurements? Approximately 50 cubits are huh? or how how big? 20 feet. Uh, no, more than that. They claim it's two feet, anywhere between 18, 18 inches and, and two feet is one cubit. So assuming assuming that's two feet, it's Having a hundred, the, the, feet uh, high. 100, 100 feet high. Now, why do you make it so so tall? So everyone can look up, see him dangling. Exactly. Everyone who wanted to make it so make it, make it seem like uh, in a way that everyone should see what's happening to this guy, a But it, it, it was reversed, and that's where Homan was hanging. He made it for Mordechai. You put him on. You you hang him on that. That particular gallows where he made from Mordechai. Yeah. And so it was. That came the end was of Homon. Homon all eight. They hang Homon uh, on the gallows. That he prepared for Mordechai. And that suited the king. Okay. So, uh, so we get, so, but okay, the so one problem has been solved. The enemy, our enemy, Haman, was hanged. But what problem still remains? There's still one more problem to go. They had to uh, remember the, the Jews all over the and all the uh, 127 uh, provinces it, because the letters were sent out. Right. Okay, so that has to be uh, uh, revoked, right? Okay. Uh, 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 yeah, it says, And that day, uh, the whole, all, all the property, all the estate that that uh, Haman had was given over to Esther. Uh, and Mordechai bought it from Amalek, he did, yeah, the Esther and Molah, and Mordechai came before the king because Esther, it appears that he did not know until this point that Mordechai and Esther were related. Okay. Uh, now, the problem is like this. When we talk about Amalek, remember, Haman was an Amalek. He was a Malachite. Mm -hmm. So the mitzvah of the Torah was not just to uh, kill all the uh, Amalekites, but also to destroy all their property. So the problem is like this. How could Mordechai and Esther take charge of the estate of Haman? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be prohibited according to the Torah that you have to destroy everything? And here, well, what, um, what do you mean take? Well, why, well, they they do destroy them. No, no, they're not to destroy the property. Oh, uh -huh. it, it, what happens is they, it says that he gave over the house of Palmer, which means uh -huh. his property, his houses, whatever property. He must have been a very wealthy man. Remember, he, 
He wanted to be ten thousand talents of, of, of right. silver to the king. He was a wealthy man. So that means Mordechai and Esther have the right to do whatever they want with the property of Homer. But the problem is, how is he able to have any um, profit or uh, they're not allowed to. Profit, not allowed to. They're not allowed to. Right. So how come he was, but we don't find that. We see that it must have been given over to, uh, it was given over to Mordechai and Esther, and he must have derived some pleasure from it or something. Some, uh, he should have, it doesn't say he destroyed it, he took it. Uh, it, it appears from it. Okay, I'll tell you. When we say it has to be destroyed, is that if, if, uh, if an Israel declares war on Amalek, so he must destroy it. Uh, to annihilate all the people and also uh, destroy the all their property. Okay. But here is a little different. Here, the uh, uh, almost properly property was given by Achashveros. It wasn't. So it was from Homan Achashveros to Esther and and, uh, and Mordecai. So that'd be okay. To go from an Amalek directly to a Jew, that would be if, um, prohibited because you were not allowed to derive any. Profit or pleasure from the Amalekites' property. Since Ahasuerus took uh, really controlled it, and now he's giving the property to Mordechai and Esther, that's okay because he had he was like the middleman. So in this case, they were permitted to derive certain uh, monetary um, profit from the um, the property of Haman. Okay, so it wasn't it wasn't directly from uh, uh, from the Amalekites to, Haman, to uh, Mordechai and Esther. To the Amalekites, from the Amalekite to Achashverosh to Esther Mordechai. So that was okay. That's what the commentators say. Okay, what does it say right there? Verse three, right? But, okay, so now, uh, so in verse three, she she tells Homer, she tells Mordechai, I'm um, sorry, Achashverosh about the uh, the letters, and. Uh, and then in verse four, by Yosha Melch Esther, and the king gave to Esther as Sharvit Hazahab. He stretched out his, his golden scepter. And Esther arose, stood for the king, and she told him, let's we'll try to go. She, she told him about the uh, letters that went out. And she wanted him <clears throat> so that he should send out. Uh, letters to uh, to nullify the the letters that were previously previously sent out to all the people. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, let's get into the way. Uh, we're looking at verse verse eight. That Achashverosh tells Mordechai and Esther, "Be attempt kisvu al yudim katov b'nechem shem emelach." Go right to. Uh, concerning the Jews, whatever's in your eyes, in the name of the king, let's move the boss metal. Remember, now Mordecai had the, the uh, signet ring that they removed from Haman and was given to Mordecai. He goes, because anything that's written in the name of the king, and it's sealed with the king's signet ring, English cannot be revoked. Okay. So the, uh, the those letters were sent out and you see. Oh yeah, we go down to verse fifteen. Here is another verse, two verses that not only does the Balkori read it, but the people uh, read the sentence first, and then the Balkori reads it. And I think I mentioned one time that besides that, Megillah is not just. Uh, 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 what do you call it? The book of a book of some sort of letter, but it's also a song. That and the way they used to do songs in those days is that even by the uh, when Moshe sang Oz Hashem, Moshe, Moshe sang the song, he would say one verse, and then the people would responded with the same verse, and they did it throughout the whole song. That would be that was the custom they had in those days. So that's why. Uh, when the question was asked, why don't you say Hallel on Purim? Mm -hmm. And what's the answer? Why don't we say Hallel? He said, because we already did too many things, we didn't need to do Hallel. No, no. The Megillah, 
takes the place of Hal. Uh-huh. That's why it is like three or four sentences to just to remind us of that, that we say it first, and then the Balkoi reads it again. That's a song. We don't still have to say the real Hallel. The Megillah takes the place of Hallel. So if that's the case, the Megillah is not just the scroll of Esther, but it's also the song of Esther. It's part of a song or a Hallel. It takes the place of the Hallel. That we know we would say on Hanukkah or all on But we read, we read Shir Hashirim on Shabbos and we say Hallel. On Pesach, we read Shir Hashirim and we say Hallel. Yes. We read the, we read uh, the book of Ruth, book. then we say Hallel. Why do we say that's right? You're right on that, but uh, uh, you had a good question. Why do we why do we have to say Hallel? Shir Hashirim is a song, so. Why does not take the five, place of Hallel? Of good question. I, I, I have to think about that. I, very good question. I'm saying that the Megillah says that takes the place of Hallel. But that. So why don't we say Shir Hashirim is a song of songs of the so the Why do we do Hallel we have, if we read Shir Hashirim? You got a good question there. I have. I don't know the answer. I, I have another question. Okay. Yeah. It says, yeah. And, and Mordechai put on the royal raiment, right? Correct. Yes. So in the beginning, when the with the first feast for 180 days, they said, or one, it might be that Ahasuerus put on the robes of the Kohen, the so Kohanim, yeah, right? Correct, so you're is right. this the royal clothes that they put up? No, I doubt that. No, no, this must be majestic clothing that mm-hmm. Ahasuerus had. You're right, he purpose again, he, the, reason, the reason why he put on the, the uh, the, the garments mm-hmm. of the going global to show the holy temple will not be rebuilt. Because right. according to his calculations, right, seventy right. years that uh, Jeremiah said that we'd be exiled, and and we, before they have the Beit Hamikdash, it's passed according to him, and the Beit Hamikdash is not finished. So that's why he wore the garments of the going global. That was different. But this is this is our. It says uh, uh, these begotten these uh, garments were. Um, uh, King, the, the, uh, king, the king's garments, the, the majestic garments, nothing to do with the uh, uh, with the coin god old garments. I think also when they took used some of the goblets on Akashverish's party, I was also goblets from the Beit Hamikdash. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, you see, Akashverish maybe he would not annihilate the Jews, but he wasn't our friend either. The only reason why he did what he did was because he loved Esther. Yeah. And by the way, I think I mentioned that Esther had a son, Darius, Darius, and under his rule, uh, he permitted the Jews to complete the second holy temple. And most probably because he had a Jewish mother. Yeah. All right, now. Okay, let me just, everything turns out okay. And I want to just point on one more thing before it. Before we say goodbye. Oh yeah, two months. Look on um, on chapter nine, verse twenty-nine. It says about Tichtov Esra Malkov as Mikhaim and Chaytu is called over. We find that there were two um, authors of the Megillah Esther. Mm-hmm. It was Esther and Mordechai. Mm-hmm. Right. What do you uh, what do you see in the word Batichtov? What's different about that that word? Which is something you should see different. It's, not, it's enlarged. Yeah, you notice the top is enlarged. It's number what? ten, right? What do you mean number ten? But the top, you saw the, the second letter is enlarged. Yeah. So whenever you see that, whether it's an enlarged letter or whether it's a tiny letter, sometimes a little tiny one, uh, there's a reason for that. The last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is tough. Tough. This. This hints to us that this book, the uh, Yolas Esther, will be the last book to become part of the Bible, to be canonized and become part of the Bible. But you know, Hanukkah, which happened later on, you don't have any any biblical book for Hanukkah. You can find the Apocrypha, you can find uh, the book about Hanukkah, but not part of the Bible. The one, the last book entered into Tanakh, in the Bible, is Esther, Esther and Mordechai. So who made that decision? Uh, most probably the men of the Great Assembly. They were slightly closed. And once Purim, once Purim took place, uh, the Bible, books in the Bible, 
But that was the end of having any book of the Bible entered into the Bible. That would be the last one. And so it says here that Esther and Mordecai wrote this book. Right. Right? Yeah. But the book has so much of the same wording and there's so much of the inference of the rest of the Chumash. Did, did they do that consciously? What, I don't understand. What, what, did what constantly? There were so many references, like so I was in another class and she took out the same words from the uh, from with the Pasha with Yosef and Pharaoh. And yeah, the similarities, you're right. And the I'm same words and everything. So Correct. did Esther and Mordecai do that consciously? Well, remember that when they wrote it, they wrote Baruch HaKodesh with a, a spiritual, uh -huh. you know, a Holy Spirit. They knew exactly what to write. And in fact, they had to uh, amend it. I think I mentioned it uh, in some class I did. That the first year when they had Purim, the sages in Israel told them not to have it because they were afraid that the um, you read something in the, in the Miguel Sester and some parts don't speak too beautiful about the um, uh, or about the Persian people or something like that. They're afraid it creates more anti Semitism. So then they rewrote it. And the second year, if they sent the, 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 a second copy, to the sages in Israel, they approved that the Megillah should be read and a, the holiday of Purim shall be established. Okay, now, uh, now Billy, and you look at the last verse on uh, chapter 10, the last verse. It's a uh, Ki Mordechai uh, Mishneh Lamechashverosh Mordechai became like a vice president of the king Lamechashverosh uh, because Allah Yudim, he was the great among Jews. But look at the next phrase. But he found favor in the majority of his brethren, a multitude of his brethren. Not everybody, not everybody liked him. Did you know that? He had a great Mordechai. Only the majority of his brethren was accepted him. Why only the majority? Because he didn't go back to Israel. He was in the Sanhedrin. No. Yeah, that's one reason. That's right. Right. He, some people right. say he assimilated a lot. Yeah, he was. They, 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 they said, "Look, you did your job. You have to be part of the Sanhedrin." I don't know if you had to go. To this was that Sanhedrin. You, know, you had to, your job is now to engage in the study of Torah and to teach others Torah, not to be part of the government. But so why did why did Mordechai why did Mordechai refuse to listen to them and he remained in the government? Maybe he had to be there for protection. Exactly, because he was afraid. Who knows? Maybe somebody else would come up with an anti-Semitic uh, proclamation. So he, he 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 was concerned about that. But uh, Story others, of a anything else, you know, you always have some opposition. Many of his, uh, the majority, the minority, I'm sorry, the minority of the people or sages did not agree with Mordechai. Uh, what Mordechai did. He did, he did, he did his job. Now's the time to go back to study Torah and to be, be part of the Sanhedrin. That, that was their uh, um, complaint against Mordecai. But he had his reason. You know, he felt he wanted to protect the people. So why did they have to put it in the Megillah? <laughs> well, maybe the teacher said, no matter how good a person is, you always have opposition. I don't know. But you have to try your best. And but do they much. didn't say anything so wonderful about Esther. I didn't say anything wrong with anything to say about Esther. Esther was the heroine. Esther risked her life and Esther, right? Yeah. Um, well, that's not called Miguel Smart guy. It's right. called Miguel that's Esther. True. Uh -huh. She's given a great title there. The Miguel mm -hmm. is called Esther. Esther, not, not called Miguel Smart guy. That shows us something that Esther is given credit. Why didn't they call her by her Hebrew name? I don't know. Maybe she was known better by Esther than Hadassah. Yeah, could be. I mean, Mordecai was that was that was not his Hebrew name. It was more Duke. Mordecai. That was a, yeah. Well, that's it's a, yeah. that's his, that's a Persian name. Right. His real name was Dulshan. Mm -hmm. Dulshan, which means a man of great uh, knowledge of languages, and that's the he was known for that. But uh, just like now, we have English names and Hebrew names, and they had Persian names and Hebrew names. But they know they knew more from his uh, Persian name Mordecai and Esther than Bilshan and Hadassah. All right?
Okay, so have a wonderful Purim. Uh, and remember, you on your, I think the, the synagogue flyers, you'll find the exact time when our services start. The reading of Megillah on the uh, on Friday morning is the second reading. I think it's 11 o'clock. You get had a link on to it. Again, they'll have all that information. Okay. Thank so you, Rabbi. Hatamayak. Yeah. So, I'm not giving a class Thursday night because I have to be in the right. show. I'm going to be in the Absolutely. So, Thursday, we're, we're, off for, we're off for one night and we'll continue on next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. So, Bachelor, Hatamayak. 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 Hatamayak.